Hi, I'm Vic Bearcroft and today I'm going to show you how to paint this uh, beautiful black Jaguar Mayor in pastels on velour using just four colours. To begin with, I'm preparing a terminal sketch uh, using a hard black pastel. This is the sketch part, we'll do the tone separately after that. A uh, little tip for you before we start this one. Um, I know a lot of people aren't uh, that confident about uh, sketching freehand, getting proportions and so on. Various uh, things you can do. You can uh, print an outline on the paper if you have a large enough printer. You can use trace down paper. White trace down is very good. Or even cheaper alternative is just to get your original uh, reference photograph in reverse, so back to front, and print that on plain paper. This is A4 paper which it's that nicely. Then go over all of the marks you want with a black pastel or a charcoal pencil. Everything you want to transfer onto your velour. You see I've made uh, marks for the whiskers, eyes, nose, those shapes and everything. And simply take that flat against your velour paper, get a bit of uh, kitchen paper scrunched up and rub it down. Just lift it to make sure everything's coming through. And that serves as kind of homemade trace down paper and it's a lot cheaper of course. So uh, if you buy the workshop kit uh, for this one uh, that reverse image will be included and so it'll give you an opportunity to try that uh, technique out for yourself. It will be a big time saver uh, in the future. You know, everybody's got access I think to an A4 printer. <coughs> so let's uh, carry on with our terminal sketch. So there's a rather basic sketch with all the bits that I want in ears, eyes, nose, mouth, and a few of the markings. Now, strange enough, uh, although Maya is a black leopard, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon, Maya is a black jaguar, not a black leopard, try not to get the two confused, she still has the same markings as a, an ordinary um, coloured jaguar. And the same with black leopards, you know, they have the same markings as ordinary leopards, it's just that their uh, fur tint is black. So, even though you may not be able to see all of the markings uh, on a head and on a body and so on, in certain lights they're very obvious. So when the sun shines on the fur you can see those markings underlying quite obviously, quite clearly. So what we want to do is at this stage make sure we've got all those markings in uh, and where the sun's going to shine on it will uh, subdue them a little bit. So, after this, we'll reinforce this sketch a little bit, get the markings in, get them in quite dark at this stage, because we're going to go over that with a, um, a coloured pens, a coloured pastel afterwards. Let's start with the ears and work down. So, using a rounded corner of the hard black pastel, we're looking for all the dark bits to begin with. And we can put some shading in the ears and so on. Uh, always try to remember at this stage that you are sketching, painting fur. So try to make sure your pastel strokes are going in the right direction. And of course when you're working on velour, as you work through or at the end, make sure you rub that pastel into the fibres of the paper and that's what will make it stick. So you'll never have to worry about fixative using velour paper as long as you use the right technique. So build up in reasonably light layers. Now we want these markings to be fairly dark at this stage, but that doesn't mean press on too hard with your pastel. If you press on too hard, they're going to be very, very thick, very black, and they're going to clog the fibres uh, quite quickly. So let's just sketch this here in. Even though you can't necessarily see all these things on your reference. Um, the base of the ear attaches to the head about there, so you're going to get a little ridge of uh, just going up to the base of the ear from the head. And then we go around that dark ear that's facing us, so that, that's predominantly dark anyway. And again, even if you can't see it on your reference, there's a little join bottom of the ear like that, a little pouch, if you like a split in the ear, make sure you get that in. We'll shade in 
the heavy dark part of it here afterwards. And just a suggestion of the back of the neck there. And then of course we've got the, the jawline, which is ragged, kind of like the roof on a dog. So again, make sure those fur strokes are the right length, right direction. Coming down to the chin, and you can use, uh, if your pastel is well worn like this, you can use various parts. So you can use a wider part, like that for example, to make uh, thicker fur strokes. Thicker fur around the neck, all those folds. And coming down to the chin, we're going to let, let this corner fade out. So we don't need to put too much fur texture around there. Uh, give it a rub, or you can wait till you finish the whole lot. I like to rub that down again, that pushes the pastel into the paper, softens your marks, lightens the tone a little bit. So it's very useful. And now we work on the, the fur from the top of the head down. Even though you might not be necessarily putting all these fur strokes in, you might want to keep it fairly soft. <coughs> it's still a good idea to follow the right direction. So fur goes from the eyes upwards. So make sure those are more or less vertical strokes. Going off with a slight, a slight angle at the top. And then we're just putting all these dark markings in, dark spots to begin with. Keeping them fairly soft around the extremes, top of the head, <coughs> around the neck and so on. As we get closer into the features, they'll get a little bit sharper. It gives us more focus on the important area. So again, Try to look beyond your reference sometimes and imagine where these markings are. When you stroke that, always stroke in the direction of the fur. We'll go around this dark section around the edge of the face. There's a little fold there. Again, quite thick fur, so I'm using. Uh, a flatter part of the pastel rather than the, the point. This is all going to be pretty much shaded in in our shadow area. Uh, we've got the markings running down the forehead. So they, they don't have to be perfect at this stage, they can be loosely rendered and then tidied up a little bit later on. The important thing to remember for this one is that around the top of the head, especially, the sun is going to be shining on the fur and on these dark markings, these dark spots. So we want to subdue them. So make sure they're fairly dark to begin with, because when we lay some uh, grey pastel over the top, we will knock them back quite a lot. Come down to the, the eyes. Now again, even though you can't see it necessarily, first of all we have the eyebrows going around like that both sides. Then we have a, a dip, a shadow in the centre of the forehead where the fur dips. All this is going to be joined together to form more or less one dark shadow eventually. And I always like to start with making sure I understand which way the fur goes, which direction it is, <coughs> and so on. So we'll come back to the eyes. There are the, the nose. A nice shadow across the nose. And curl that, curl that around so we get the roundness of the nose. A lot of these marks you may not see at, at the end, but it's always a good idea to keep following as much as you can the direction of the fur and the anatomy just in case some of these marks are visible. And in 
is something like this, uh, predominantly a black cat. Uh, it's all about light and shade really, and the correct light and shade will show you the, the anatomy. It's fine to be a lot of uh, black fur underneath the eye, and we've got this little ridge of pale fur on both sides, just underneath the eye, as a lot of cats do have. And slightly darker underneath, if you like, that's the cheekbone. It sinks in away from you underneath, which is why you always get a darker shadow underneath the eye. And of course, we're still trying to create a little bit of fur texture as well. Dark above the eye, down into a corner. Strange to think that when you're painting a, a black cap, such as this gorgeous black jaguar, Maya, then strange to think that if you're concentrating on markings, a lot of which you can't normally see. shadow on the inside of that eye. Again we can tidy the eyes up later on so don't worry about it being a little bit rough and ragged at this stage. Another dark shadow under that cheekbone just fading out into the cheek itself. Okay and then down to the nose pad. You can't see it too well on the photograph but we always have a little dip top of the nose pad like that and of course we have the nostrils, nostrils on the left we can't see but we can see the shape of it, we can see the nostril on the right hand side here, very visible so make sure that's nice, fairly sharply shaped. You notice when you rub it, you don't worry about getting little grey marks in and around the, the bit that you just draw because that will help you with the capturing the tonal values as you work through. These are valuable little bits of pastel that don't get wasted. Uh, centre line through the nose pad, the leather as it's called in cats. Big cats and little cats, always called the leather. That runs down to the cleft between the top lips. <coughs> And this lovely little shape that all cats have. So the curve of the top lip. Shadow down here. Curve of the top lip. And a little sort of rounded shape like that for the bottom lip. It just protrudes underneath. Down to the chin. And whisker follicles, of course, we can see those. And the sink glands, and the sink glands all over the place. Four rows of whisker follicles. And that again is another standard. Even if on a black cap, if you can't see those clearly, any reference. One, two, three, four. There's always four. Those are the sink glands. Always four rows. And then we have the line of the mouth. Darker shadow underneath. Which brings us down to the chin. And the chin at this stage, again I'm going to use the flatter part of the flat pastel to get a sort of mass in at this stage. Not too heavy. Detailed whiskers and so on can be put in later just begin to get the mass shape of the chin. It's not a heavy chin like a, a tiger's, it's a bit delicate, if you like, a smaller shape for the chin. A tiger's chin is usually quite big, comes down quite a lot, but that's quite a delicate little shape. Um, a few more little bits of fur texture in the shadows or markings. Get a little bit more 
texture in, and then we can put our first internal value. So that's the edge of the mouth and so on. Give that a rub. <coughs> and now before we do the eyes, what we'll do is we'll set our tunnel values, medium, dark and light. So we've got some quite dark values in here. What we want is like a medium tone and then the lightest tone will be the paper, the grey paper for now. So always begin with a light to medium tone, even in the darkest areas, using the flat of the pastel. Following the direction of the fur as much as you can. And then what we do, even though that ear is going to be quite dark, we start off like that. You can always add more. It's always easier to add tones on the lawn than it is to try and take it off. Join those together and then we'll do the, the neck as well. Around the cheek. Again that's going to be fairly dark. Let it fade out down to here. And the neck itself. Fade it out into the corner. Give it a good rub. And then we can add more tone as required. What we want is this ear section and this shadow to match the dark tone that we've got in the forehead there. So even if it takes two or three layers, don't worry. Everybody has different hand pressure. So if it takes two, three, four layers, just keep building it up softly. Don't panic and try and get it all done in one layer because that will clog the fibres of the paper a lot quicker. And if you clog the fibres of the paper too much, you'll f struggle to get uh, any more layers on top of it. If you keep the layers light, what you do is build up a nice, firm, solid bed, well rubbed in, there's a pastel that's not going to move, and you can keep building and building and building on that. <coughs> so, shadows down, the lower jaw, into the chin, Again, don't worry about losing detail, I can bring detail back. As long as you're not too heavy, you can still see all those really dark bits we started with. So, with a, a fairly oh, mid-tone area, dark tone below the eye, going to mid-tone, this is all anatomical structure. So, where you have something that comes out towards you, it's going to be lighter, something that goes away from you, like the uh, hollow in the cheekbone, that's going to be a little bit darker. This is quite a, a big muscular area. It's going to be lighter. And then we can create that roundness of the cheek by the same method, just like shading um, a sphere or a ball. That's what you're trying to achieve. Try to get that, that three dimensional shape just using tones. Cheek on the far side. The nose, reasonably dark. Have this lighter area on top of the head where the sun's shining on it. Just adjust that turn a little bit more into the forehead, which was nice and dark. And then we'll just sketch in the eye shape for now. What we're going to do is detail the eyes a little bit later on. So I just want to make sure we've got the pupils in the right place. Shape of the eye around the top and the lower shape going down to the rim. Again, try not to overdo it at this stage because you might want to make corrections. If you notice one eye is slightly misshapen, you can correct it. So keep, keep the idea that this is just a, a sketch that's getting a little bit more detailed bit by bit. Need time just to sort of sit back and review it before you jump in and try and do a finished eye straight off. And the tear duct, of course. A little sort of curve. Pointed curve in the corner. And again, we can darken anything we want around the eyes at the next stage. So that will be our basic tonal sketch.
probably the most important part of the whole painting when you get your shapes and your form, or we'll begin to get the form. All we'll do next is work on the background, get that out of the way before we uh, refine our sketch a little bit more. The background needs to sit behind your subject. So this is the idea of trying to try and get it almost complete or even complete. What I want to do is um, going from the original reference photograph, get an indication of sort of foliage, soft blurred foliage. This could be you know in the jungle in the South American rainforests where Jerry was mostly come from. Dark and corners a little bit always helps. Now the technique I use is try to do little sort of haphazard squares with the side of the pastel. Overlay them. So bit by bit you can build that up again. Don't go for the full dark too soon. Do individual little haphazard squares. Rub it round and round. Lean back. Review your tones. And add it. Add more tone. More texture as you need it. So darker in the corner is going to help push the face forward. So twist and turn your arm, your wrist. Try to keep those squares really natural and haphazard, and you'll end up with a nice and soft focus textured background. So <clears throat> once we've completed that, which is now our terminal sketch. Complete. I just noticed a little odd shape there, just going to correct it while I think about it. There we are. Uh, we'll start adding some colour next. Now, only two colours for this project, apart from the black and white, we've got uh, uh, green and uh, pale grey. So, what I'm going to do is the background first, and using the same technique, so the haphazard squares, light layers, build up the colour of the background. And it's going to be nice and cool because of the dark grey paper. Build up the colour of the background so we get a nice sort of dark uh, foliage of a rainforest. Don't go too heavy too soon. Same with the tone. Build up your colours in light layers for the same reasons so you don't A clog the paper too quickly and B you have control of the amount of colour that's going on. So if you go too heavy too soon, you find it's too saturated with colour, and it's going to be a bit of a job trying to get it off. So lean back and squint between each layer, that certainly does need a little bit more colour. So I usually work on the premise of about three layers with my hand pressure that I know. And as I said, we all have different hands. Make sure when you're doing this, you go just inside the edge of your subject every time. Because what we don't want to end up with is a sort of grey paper halo all around it. The temptation is to be very, very careful and go right up to the edge as you see it. But you always end up with a little sort of grey outline when you try to be too careful. Don't worry about, don't worry about going just inside edge of your subject because that will paint over very easily. So easily put a highlight over that. Touch of grey green. Remember that square strokes, a bit round and round. Just a, a third layer, especially towards the top. It's going to be a little bit more vibrant green. What I don't want is the um, final layer to look grey. I want it to look like a dark green. So try and get rid of most of the pastel black or the pastel grey until it appears to be a dark green. That should do it. So while we're at it, while we've got the green, I'm just going to put a shade of base colour of green in the eyes. Not too heavy. I want them to be fairly cool as well so I always want the reason for using toned papers, of course, is to allow some of that tone to show through. So I want that to be a, a nice, cool, greyish green. Okay, so uh, adding our second base colour, which is our pale 
Paul Gray here. Um, this is going to go over the lighter areas of so the nose, top of the head, cheeks and so on. Now where we've got markings there already, which are quite visible, if we put a light layer of this grey over the top, it's going to knock them back a little bit. Almost as if the sun is shining on them and reducing the impact, uh, visual impact of those markings. It will help to bring those elements together, keep it fairly soft. So already you can see the difference. That's just a light layer of the light grey. You can see that much softer, almost not invisible, but very subdued markings here as against the ones on the other side. So gently following the direction of the fur again. And with any soft pastel, and remember not to press on too hard, not to swamp it, because soft, softer pastels will clog the fibres a lot quicker than uh, the hard pastels. So there's a little bit of a grey around the top of the ear. And again, you can use the edge of your pastel, you don't have to just use the flat. So we can get up some greyish highlights to begin with around edge and the light shining that's the base colour of the grey on the cheap bone that pale phone just being a bit high and we're going to put a, um, an even brighter highlight on top of this but when it comes to doing your final highlights as I always say make sure you've got a bit of colour underneath if you're using a white pastel, white pastels on their own can be very, very powerful, very strong, too strong almost. So if you have a base colour underneath and put white on the top, then it will take on the appearance of that base colour. In this case, it will be a nice, cool, greyish white. So if you put a base colour of brown underneath, then you'll get a warmer highlight with the white on top. A little bit of light catching the neck there. And as we go for the paler fur around the eyes, again I'm using the round, a rounded end of this well used pastel. And rather than going flat over here, this is the cheek. We're going to start to add a little bit of texture in. This area I want to have fairly detailed, not over detailed, but I want to see some texture in there. So rather than just use the flat of the pastel, I'm going to try and create a little bit of texture following the length and direction, of course. And it, it doesn't matter if you don't cover the whole area with pastel, you can let some of the grey paper show through. Or you can continue to build up those layers so no grey paper is visible at all. That's entirely up to you, but it doesn't matter if you see a little bit of grey paper showing through here and there. Not in this one. So again, a base coat of that grey on the cheekbone, just below the lower rim. And we're down underneath the eye. Same sort of thing, a little bit of texture. Remember this sphere shape we've got on the cheek. So we've got dark, mid, light, depending on the curve of it. So light to mid to dark will be fine. And again, a little bit of texture. And the edge of that coming down into the chin and put a little bit of thicker highlight around the neck, the folds in the neck. And again, this is just going to fade out into the lower corner. And down to the nose. Now the fur on the nose, of course, is very, very short. So I'm not going to use the end of the pastel to create fur texture. All I'm going to do is use the side of it to keep it quite flat. Texture of the paper, the more paper will provide that very short fur texture for you. Bring that 
down, trying to check for my nose, my nose leather. Uh, start up over here, little soft highlights towards the left hand side principally, where the light's coming from. And a little bit of paler burn underneath the nostril. And this could be fairly loose, it doesn't have to be uh, very precise and highly detailed. It's going to provide a base colour for the final details to go over the top, remember. Little highlight bits in the chin. And the lower lip is quite pale, pale grey anyway, a little bit of shine on it. And that's just about there, I think. So that's our base colours, the green and the grey. There's my hint inside it here. Um, again, we're going to come back to the eyes to finish those off shortly. But what I'm, what I'm thinking of doing here, first of all, is just adding a little bit more grey over that green, just to cool it down a tiny bit, so it's not too bright, green and varied. Okay. So that's the internal <coughs> sketch and the base colours. Next job is to uh, add more details. We we'll do the final highlights. And remember, most of the details in here are going to be dark, apart from the final highlights. So we need to decide which of these markings are fine, subdued, pushed back with the grey, and which we want to bring out. Uh, I always maintain that if we bring out the details, um, the strongest tones in this area, ears down to the mouth, this bit here, that's going to pull the face out towards you and push everything else back. Give you almost a sense of three dimensions in uh, a portrait. Starting with the ears, um, now the detail doesn't have to be sharp again, remember. We can still add depth, bring areas forward just by using a dark tone have to be detailed. The combination of the two, detail and stronger tones, dark and light, will have the effect of bringing things forward. But even that will bring that ear forward a little bit. And because that ear is further away than this ear, then by making this one a little bit softer, just a touch softer in tone, we'll push it back. Stronger in tone, we'll bring that one forward. Of course, you can treat every area the same. You can have the whole portrait from back to front is highly detailed. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. It doesn't make any, there's no detrimental effect to your finished painting at all. It's just how you want to achieve it, what effect you want to achieve. I like to try and achieve a three dimensional effect, even in a portrait bringing important areas forward, pushing less important areas back. So this ear can now be a little bit darker. Again, nice, soft, short fur around the edge, which is what the evil or people will give you. So we're going to have certainly a darker centre of the ear, with hairs growing over it that we can't necessarily see. But if we can just imply it, by making the appropriate strokes and any of that lighter tone that shows from underneath will suggest that we've got hairs growing from the outside in. Okay, so I'll give that a nice darkish tone all the way around. Lots of rubbing. Head joins the base of the ear, remember those strokes. Try to keep those strokes going. As they will be partly visible at least. Let's work around the ear, little join there, work around the ear, the neck, and zoom in onto the main features bit by bit. Don't forget to keep leaning back, squinting, blurring your painting. I do this all the way through, and that's a great way of checking your overall tones. When you sit on top of it for a length of time, it's hard to tell 
what tonal values you've got. Something that looks dark, very close up, can look quite faint when you lean back. Remember what you're doing when you lean back and sprint is you're mimicking how a viewer will see it from uh, a few feet away, hanging up on a wall in a frame. Um, so that's the effect that you're trying to achieve is how does it look when someone walks into an exhibition, for example, and sees it on a wall from a few feet away. Can they see what you want them to see? Okay, so again we'll darken the neck using the side of the hot black plastic, we'll darken the neck this thick chunky fur underneath the face. Rubbing as you go. And we'll let that fade out. This plastic is getting very warm now, so I'm Keep turning it to find a nice flat part. So bring that around underneath the chin. That dark area underneath the chin will help push the chin forward. A nice soft edge and the neck fading down. Fading out and fading down into that bottom right hand corner. Right, okay, now we'll work from the outside in. So, these markings on top of the head now, some of these are now quite faded. The sun's shining on them, it'll naturally, visually fade some of those markings. So, some I can bring back a little bit. I want probably about a, a three tonal variation on these markings, I guess. So, gently, gently. Add a little dark areas here and there. You'll get your clues from the reference photograph. So we're going to go a little bit darker and even probably a little bit sharper as we work down towards the eyes. So I'm not going over the, the whole markings here again. As you can see I'm just sort of adding a few little dark bits here and there just to give the markings a little bit of depth as well, so they don't look too flat. As we come down to the forehead, as the anatomy turns away from the light, turns inwards, if the light's coming down there, then that's going to be turned inwards, away from the light, it's going to get a little bit darker. So something like this, uh, you know, the tonal variation that you use to create anatomical forms, especially in uh, something like a black cat is even more important. It's always important, of course, whatever you're painting, but it becomes even more important when you've got limited amount of colour to help you. You've got mostly tonal values to work with. So spend more time on your tones than anything else in something like this. Still have the highlights to come, of course. Always leave the highlights to the end. There's a huge temptation for a lot of people to put highlights on and use the white too soon. Try not to do that because if you use white too soon, wherever you put white and then you need to put black over the top, it will contaminate it. Or even if you put a colour over the top, it will contaminate that colour. So keep your whites locked away until the very end. We'll work our way down to the forehead, gradually turning in that anatomical form, gradually turning in the lower we get. The roundness of the eyebrows, notice I'm following the eyebrows around that sort of shape. This forehead section is going to be really, really dark, but I'm still not putting additional hand pressure on there to make that dark. I'm just putting more layers on. So we'll almost come to the darkest part between the eyes. That was 
shadow mostly on the right hand side as we look at it at the nose. The light's coming down from this direction, this side's going to be more in shadow. As always, lots of rubbing, keep that fur nice and soft. And I have that darker ridge of fur just below the eye, bring that down into the cheek. And the same on this side. Downs into the hollow of the cheek. Little extra markings along the way, or <coughs> just adding more detail to the markings we've already got. <coughs> and we get a shadow in the corner of the eye as well, so we can add even more flecks of shadow fur and or markings over that grey just to take the blankness off it. And bring that down to the edge of the cheek. It's all about texture, markings, building it up bit by bit. Sharper markings around the face, stronger, sharper texture, it's all going to help push the face forward. And the whisker follicles, scent glands, and so on. We've made them a little bit stronger so they're visible. Same with our nostrils. So we'll push those forward. So we have a slightly darker shadow at the bottom of each of the cheeks. There. And here. Remember, light's catching this bit maybe a little bit. So lower down is maybe more shaded away from the light and then we've got the line of the chin just below the bottom lip and a little bit more shadow in the chin put on the right hand side still thinking about texture but not too much Final texture of chin whiskers and so on will go on at the end just to bring it all together. Lean back and squint at the turn. A few more little flecks in here and there. A little bit more shading. Lots of rubbing, of course. So there, so before we do our final highlights, what we'll do is work on the eyes, get those finished. So we've got a basic shape of the eye, both eyes of course. Uh, what we want to do is add some shadows, highlights and reflections. So first of all, let's just uh, sharpen the pupils a little bit more. Okay, now we'll leave the outer part of the eye, both eyes, until we've done the rest of it. So we don't, uh, if we do the rims out of sharper parts of the eye too soon, then we might smudge it when we put our highlights and reflections on. So the first thing to think about is shadows. If the light's coming from the top left, we're going to get a little soft shadow just underneath the eyelid. So it's using the flat part of your black pastel just to create a sort of darker green underneath the eyelids. That's all we're doing. Okay, so very, very lightly. This is a nice dark green shadow below the eye. So the second thing is going to be our highlight. So the first time I'm going to use white. I'm going to use a, a, a flat, more rounded part of a hard white pastel to begin with. The highlights always are on the opposite side. This is highlighting the iris, so making the iris paler. 
always on the opposite side to the one light source. So I'm following the light through. The highlight on the lighter part of the iris is going to be on that side, so you can see it's very, very soft. What I want there is a very, very pale greyish green. And we'll do the same one here. Very, very softly, bit by bit, just build up to that very pale grey green tone. This is why we don't want to sharpen the outer parts of the eye too quickly because that's, that white is going to smudge it a little bit. So we've got shadows, we've got highlights. The third and uh, I suppose the most important thing for the eyes that people see are the reflections that shine, you make it shiny. Those always go on the side of your light source. So light's coming from the left, the reflection will be to the left of the pupil. Joining the pupil. Okay, simple as that. Just below the shadow, on the line of the shadow, you know, crawl on that hard white pastel, dab it on bit by bit, lean back and squint. If you can see the reflections when you squint, you know it's, it's working, doing the job you want. The final part of the eyes is to take your hard black pastel again, nice, sharp and corner. And just tidy it up. Tidy up the lower ends, a little bit of fur just underneath the lower rim. This one, the corner where the tear duct is. Maybe the pupil, if necessary, bring that back. The lower rim, nice and clean, nice and sharp. Darker fur just below the pale fur on the cheekbone. Off again, the tear duct channel. That should do it. So, before again, before we put our final highlights on, the primary highlights is make sure that other features are nice and sharp, particularly our eyes, of course, nose, and mouth. We're there. So the final part is our primary highlight. Now we don't want to uh, make the whites too strong in this one. Uh, the, sh the fur is very shiny of course so it will be quite reflective, very glossy. So what I tend to use is a nice rounded corner, so something like that for example, nicely rounded for soft fur highlights. So the tip of the ears light shining off the back of the ear like that. Always start when you do your primary highlights, always start when you're highlighting a shape at the edge and bring the highlight back so you get the shape correct. And we've got some hairs sticking out from that ear which we'll put in. Not too sharp, it's a little bit further away, nice and soft. ridge on here. And again, when you're highlighting soft fur, make soft highlights. Build it up bit by bit. So, a little bit of a highlight on that here, even though it's not on the reference. We can do it. And then we'll work around the edge and come inwards. So, if we have, again, rounded corner, and soft fur, top of the head. Of course this enables us now to get a, an actual outline, a nice soft outline which we didn't have before. And in between some of these dark markings, some of the spots, we can put a little highlight too. So that helps with not only the anatomical Form. It also helps to show those subdued markings off a little bit more. So I'll fire out on the back of the neck and work our way down, mostly around the left hand side where the light source is. So again, work 
work out the shape that you want. You want to bring that back in from the edge. That's ideal. Start with the edge and bring it back in. So the edge of the nose. Cheeks. A little bit of shine on the bottom of the lip. And go through lighter bits around the face, very, very soft, rounded corner here. Hard pasta will do it. And we've got those shinier, lighter bits of fur just below the eyes. Too heavy. And then the sharper part of your hard white pastel for the tear duct. It's quite wet, of course, moist. This will give you a little shine. A little bit just below the nose. And I think we're probably ready for our final whiskers. <coughs> so we'll start at the top and work down. One or two ear hairs, ear whiskers. Whenever you're doing whiskers, wherever they are, just rub away the roots so the roots disappear into where they're sprouting from. We've got some uh, eye whiskers on this side, so you'll have to excuse my arm for a second. There is a sharper part of your pastel for these, of course. Again, rub away the roots. One or two eye whiskers on this side. Again, just flick those in, roll away the roots. If necessary, you can always go back with any whiskers. If the roots are still showing, just darken them with your black pastel. And finally, the whiskers along around the cheeks. So not too long on the left hand side because they're sort of slightly turned away from you, rub away the roots. Whiskers on the right hand side, they're always going to be shorter and finer at the front, longer and thicker towards the back. So the shorter, finer ones are quite easy just to click in, like so. Not too bright, but quite greyish anyway. Rub away the roots, longer and thicker towards the back. the roots if necessary and then we'll go back and just darken the roots here and there on the, the thicker ones especially just to push them away now uh, as i'm putting a few final chin whiskers on on the original reference photograph you'll see that maya does have a particularly strong white thick whisker on this side which I've chosen not to put in. She doesn't have it anymore. She had it from a very young age to from probably about a year. But that's gone now. So the reason I haven't put it in basically is because it would detract. It would stand out too much. It stands out very obviously on the original reference photograph, but we don't necessarily want to put it on here because it would detract too much. And we don't want that to, to be the first thing people spot. So Happy with your whiskers and quick check, quick squint before you finish. And we'll call that one done and we'll sign it. So, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Um, rather lovely painting of a lovely cat, Maya Black Jaguar from the Big Cat Sanctuary. Don't forget, uh, if you um, want to order the home workshop kit, details are coming up on the screen now as are indeed the details of my Facebook page should you want to have a go and post your results for uh, my critique, if you will. So thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time.